I know it doesn't look like it right now, but it's a hurricane out there. See, the, the trees. Anyway, we're gonna start combining corn. Buenos dias, amigos. Welcome to the farm. This morning, we are in the 2020 John Deere S790. We're headed down the road to Mary Lou's. We have one cornfield. That is right. This is my first time on the highway on these LSW 1400s. We got the 12 row folding John Deere corn head on the front. We are getting a little bit of a, this front to back. You can kind of see it on camera right now. If I go over kind of what we're doing right now, 15 and a half, 16, it gets real bouncy. I don't know if our LSWs are not centered with the low spot of the tire on the high spot of the rim. That could be our problem, or it could just be a ballast issue of Back into the combine's lighter than the front of the combine or vice versa. But either way, I can go about 16 mile an hour. Otherwise, we are losing control and going into the ditch and we don't want that. Cause this combine's like $500,000. This head's like 165. I love this, we take up the whole road. <laughs> tires on one side, tires on the other side. Hey, neighbors still got some beans in. We actually used to farm this field for 30 years. And when they built that co-op, family sold this farm. Take that back. They sold the 40 under the co-op. They kept this. And then they rented it to another family member and then they just sold it this year. Okay, we got our story straight. You gotta be careful at this house coming up. They have a big old dog and sometimes they forget to shut their gate going to the driveway and he'll come running right out to you to greet you in the middle of the road. No spray. There's a couple organic farmers in this neck of the woods. It's kind of interesting going by. They do a really good job. That cornfield back there, I think kind of up where we're going, there's a couple bean fields too. Well, those guys are combining corn. Higgly Wigglies! Whoa. What's beeping at me? Whoa. No cop, no stop. <laughs> we are coming up on more Piggly Wigglies. And right next to the Piggly Wigglies, we got North Side Mary Lou's. Boy, we got Spider Man here. Oh, yep. Got a low snoot, snout, hood, whatever you want to call it. We call them snoots. Which is what they're called. You guys never got to meet my grandpa Ray, but it is really funny how similar Cooper and him look right now. Grandpa Ray would always wear shirts just like that. And the way the shirt kind of flows off Cooper, it's like the same shape as grandpa and they have the same walk and they wear the same shoes. Well, grandpa didn't have extra tuffs on, but just, I don't know, their whole demeanor. <laughs> Very similar. He's trying to get all the snoots at the same level right now. For some reason, that one wants to keep dropping lower or higher. It's kind of spitting a little bit too. When it's super windy like this, we don't like to run because our semi tarps. You open them up a little bit, that wind comes in, lifts it right off, just throws it over the side of your trailer. And good luck getting that thing back up there. It's a 45 foot long sail. Here we go. I might have forgot to open up a bin lid and put some beans on the ground, but. Whoa, Cole, what happened here? Going along, I turn around, look back, see what kind of sample we got, and bam, we got a hay bale. Whoa. Yep, she done. There's like $500. We're gonna start off with adjusting these deck plates. This is a corn plant. Goes right in between there. And then all it does is it just gets pulled straight down and then that ear gets knocked off because it can't fit through that gap anymore. And then the ear gets brought up inside. But we want the, the clearance between these plates to basically be right what the size of the stock is. So that way we don't have a bunch of corn and stuff falling through these holes. We literally started by the semi and made it here. <laughs> How's this corn looking? They all what well, we're looking for, and, well, this fell off the head, so, I mean, we'll just throw that over there so we can combine it in a little bit. But what we're looking at is we're looking at these cobs. We want to see how broken up are these. So this one is fairly broken. Ideally, we'd like the whole cob of the ear. Like, these ones here kind of ground up a lot, these little chunks. That's what we don't want, because these can fall into the grain tank, and then they get in with our corn, and then just kind of makes a dirty sample. But what we're also looking at we want to make sure that we're getting all the corn off of these. So when they're this small, you're not going to see corn on them. But basically we want to open up the machine until we start seeing some corn on these and then we'll close it down just a little bit. And then we're threshing perfectly because right now we're over threshing this. Also, we're going to dig back and just make sure we're not spitting corn out the back. So like there we got corn, we got corn. With this corn being this dry, we are going to get a little bit of header loss just when it hits the head. Got that hard metal. 
on the dry corn, it pops it right off the ear. But we should not really see a lot other than that. Sample doesn't look terrible though. I think we'll widen up that concave just a little bit. Sometimes it's good when things happen to the younger ones too, so they don't think we're flipping out losing it. We got some new help this year on the farm running grain cart. Neva's dad is coming out to help us. He's ran tractors when he grew up in Mexico when he was younger on his grandpa's farm. But he hasn't ran anything big before, so this is going to be kind of new for him. He ran a giant popper back in the day. So it is naturally fitting we put him in the John Deere 4840. I'll give you a rundown on this thing. I opened the concave too, and then I slowed the rotor down 100. Eee, knocking over all the corn. You remember the first time you drove the combine with dad? And you're going along and he just always wanted to grab the wheel whenever you got off your roll a little bit. Yeah. So kind of gnawing up these cops. Welcome to Mary Lou's, ladies and gentlemen. We got a whole mile to the back of the field over there. This corn looks good. Standing up, not all snapped over. Oh! In a little bit of carbon tank. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I've been told that this is kind of a common thing in deer combines, just having some carbon tank and having some ground corn. This is kind of interesting. We had some planter inconsistencies. Look how low these ears are over here, way down. And then you go in one row. Look at that. Up on my shoulder. That's incredible. And a little bit of tar spot in this field too. Ears seem to be looking pretty decent though. Nice and strong yet. Stock quality. These these bad boys are. Yeah, yeah they're strong down there. Geez, I can't even squeeze it. Yeah. We outfitted this head with Yetter Devastators. Those are those black things. I've said it before and I'll say it again, but I will never run a corn head without those. Look how much it knocks down that stock. Just breaks it right out of the ground. Look at that broken now it's got good ground contact it's going to be getting in contact with those microbes in the soil so it'll break this down and there's an incredible amount of nutrients inside of there that the plants next year will be able to utilize because it's going to be able to get broken down then look it just everything is just completely broken up but the beauty of it is in front of the tires you don't have a big old spear sticking up right here just putting wear on our lsws it knocks everything over Beautiful, that's what we like to see. 36 on the concave, that's the widest I've ever seen. But they're thick cobs. If we find two kernels of corn in a square foot on the ground, so if we found two inside that box, we'd be losing one bushel per acre over the course of an acre. About 80,000 kernels of corn in a bushel, and there's like 43,000 square feet in an acre. So, Two times 43,000 is 86,000 kernels. I'm going to oil this hopper up a little bit. It's stiffer than a doorknob. A oh, hole, buddy. <laughs> Yeah. Here we go. I got Ricardo's first load and his Johnny Popper. <laughs> the green cart looks so small. <laughs> That's incredible. One hopper load basically fills that cart. Ricardo, throttle, throttle. Hey! Cooper's gonna run semi now, and we're gonna combine. Look at the job those devastators do. It's just a mat out here. You can't even see the roll. Look at that. <laughs> That's awesome. I'd say we're at pretty acceptable header loss here, and machine loss. That looks pretty good. We got the head set for four mile an hour right now. This combine could cook a whole lot faster than four mile an hour. Problem is, you're just gonna get everything full immediately. 
And then we're gonna be sitting. Sounds like they're having a little bit of some troubles at the bend site, some fuses that need to be in the west bend or not in the west bend, so we can't use the west bend. So I guess they're gonna fill the overhead for the time being. Make that work. Well, we are just getting set up to do our first load of the corn of the year, and uh, have you guys ever had it where you just want to pull out your hair? This thing here, supposed to push the lever there. There's cables that go all the way up above. There's little flippers that flip to put it to wherever you want it. She's stuck. We got her to move one thing, and then boom. You guys just might as well know my frustration. And eventually, you guys will know all my for us, my <sighs> frustration about this. Okay. This is where the cables come up. It's supposed to turn the flap. Nice looking ears over here. Wow. You got something going on down here. Row number 12 or row number one, whatever you want to call it. I'd call it 12. But my. Snapping rollers are not snapping. We're all plugged up down here. Ugh. Problem solved, world's greatest mechanic did it again. Well, I don't know if you guys can see, oh. but up in here, the distributor out here, there was a cable that, well, there was some stuff that came undone, but we had a spider monkey. Zach crawled up there, up above me even. Had to crawl up the side here, but he got up there. Probably hard to see, my flashlight's going wacko. We did find some other issues while we were up there that we're gonna have to take care of one of these next days. Some cables put on wrong. Big thank you to Mark and Zach for getting this so at least we can move some corn. 75,840. Big load. Dad just called, he tried turning on the leg, it wouldn't work, so he got a hold of the guy who programmed our touchpad thing that turns everything on, and I guess we're missing fuses for the west bend, and so we can't run any of that stuff, but he's like, you can run it to the east bend. The problem is the east bend's still missing chunks of the floor because we're waiting for parts to come in to get that put back together. We were gonna put into the overhead bend. Dad and Cooper started putting into it, and they're like, man, why does that sound like there's something in there? Opened it up, still some beans in there. I guess we forgot to take all the beans out of it. And then they're like, oh, well, we can put it in the hopper bottom bin. So they went to go switch over to that with the distributor and it was stuck and they couldn't get it to move. So here we are. All the semis are full. 340's full. 4840's full. We got 24 acres done today. ain't working. Oh yeah, she burned off. We paid like $50,000 for an 8,000 bushel per hour pit. Most we can get it is 6,300 bushels per hour. And now it's starting to burn belts off every foursome. So we just need to order like 50 sets of belts <laughs> and we might be able to get through harvest. Either way. We ordered some new belts in the morning. We're gonna climb down there. We're gonna see if the motor's not aligned right or something. Something's gotta be going on that's causing that to happen. But anyway, that's all I got for today. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one.